Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Wherever you are and whatever you're doing, I hope you're having a fantastic day. Today, in the Things You Missed in Elden Ring series, we're going to be combing through the streets, buildings, and rooftops of Lanedale Royal Capital. This is an enormous area with so many incredibly good missable items, so this is probably going to be a huge video. For this video particularly, you want to make sure you stick around and really cover every single area, because a little bit later in the game, without giving away any spoilers, this area will change completely, and then most of these items become missable. Most importantly, a legendary weapon that you need for an achievement. I recently changed the PC that I used to record all my footage, and for some reason the in-game sound effects weren't being recorded. We've still got the background music though and my horrific voice to listen to, so hopefully that doesn't detract from the video too much. As always, if you like the videos and enjoy this kind of content, then please subscribe to the channel and like the video. And with the intro out of the way, let's go straight into tip one. All right, once you've made it into the capital and you've got the East Capital Rampart Site of Grace, head out the door here, turn left and clear out all the envoy enemies, and then just as you go downstairs after beating the huge one, turn left and you can go round the side and into this room here. Here you can grab a smithing stone four. And then inside this room some cave moss. Now you want to head back out again and jump on these rooftops. As you're clearing out all the gargoyles, you'll be able to grab yourself a couple of golden runes and also a stone sword key. Now we'll head on to tip number two. The next thing you want to do is make your way back to the top of these rooftops again. Head back into this room and down the lift. Walk directly into the room in front of you and after clearing out the enemies, go up the ladder just here. You'll be able to grab a perfume bottle from this chest here. But more importantly, when you go up the stairs, you can grab a seedbed curse. And you need five of these to complete the Dung Eaters quest line. There are actually six seedbed curses in the game, so it's fine if you happen to miss one, such as if you did kill Shrimp Guy at the start of the game. Back at the site of Grace once more. Sprint down where I'm going, just run past all the envoys, no need to kill them every single time. Then you can hop down the roof here and past this royal knight. Once you jump down again and onto the main street, the first time you come here, an Erd Tree avatar will spawn a bit further down just by this fallen over caravan. Once you've dealt with him and picked up the few items, come all the way up these stairs. Halfway up, there's a few enemies and another item or two that you can grab here, but we're gonna head all the way up for now and then turn right. And once you've cleared out all the knights and royal knights, you can grab some gravel stones from this corpse here, a golden rune 13 over here. And then once you've taken out the rest of the enemies, run behind this pavilion and grab eight tarnished golden sunflowers. Now for the more important parts of this tip, jump onto the roof here and you can grab yourself a stone sword key. Head down and deal with yet another royal knight. And then once you've dealt with the remaining enemies in the area, you can come down this ladder. And when you come out the other side of the building here, you'll see another one of them omen killer enemies. The first time you defeat him, he will drop the omen smirk mask. And then you can go and grab a smithing stone six here as well. That's it for this tip, so we'll move on to the next one. This next tip is very quick and it's right by where we just defeated the omen killer. Head in the room here. You can grab a sight of grace, the deathbed dress and Lionel's armor set. Hell yes. So we'll now head on to the next one. From the sight of grace we just unlocked, go straight ahead and into the sewers. Explore them at your leisure until you get to where I am. Grab the few items in this room here and then head up the ladder. Once you're up the ladder, you can go directly in front of you and climb up the wing of this dragon. Once you're at the top of it, hop off just here. You can grab a rune arc on the corpse. Up the next ladder, you'll have to deal with a royal knight at the top of these stairs. Then you can grab the gravel stones where he was. Continue a bit further along, you'll have to deal with one more enemy, and then you'll come to another site of grace. And I'll join you in the next tip once I've finished hunting this bloody finger. Once you've rested at that site of grace, come outside here, you'll see there's a golden seed on the tree with a few envoy enemies and a gargoyle in front of you. Defeat all of them, grab the loot, then you can turn around, head under this giant tree and start coming up the stairs. 
and you'll see a Grave Warden Duelist miniboss. Kill him dead, and then continue up the cliff to the right. There's nothing on the left here. A bit further up the cliff, you can loop round to the left, and if you've been progressing the questline of Corin, you will see him with Gold Mask. As I've mentioned a few times previously, I'll come back and cover the quest lines in full in later videos, so we'll ignore them for now. Just behind them, on the cliff edge here, you can grab a smithing stone 5. And then inside the building, you can get the Star Fist weapon, which is a great strength weapon with crazy bleed buildup. Keep going back the way you just came from, and you'll find another Grave Warden Duelist. Once he's dead, you can then grab the Ritual Shield Talisman, and a little bit further ahead still will be a full, a full, 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 a full calling finger remedy. And you're done in this area, so I'll meet you back at the same site of grace we were at just at the start of this tip. Back at the site of grace, come here where we beat up the envoys and the gargoyle. Come down the stairs here, and once you come out into this big open area, go forwards in front of you, and you can come into this massive building here, which, to your surprise, you'll see is Round Table Hold. Obviously, it's not the round table hold that we go to. This is like the real world royal capital version. But yeah, there's loads of stuff to do in here. If you've been progressing the Volcano Manor invasion quest lines, you'll be able to invade Vargram the Raging Wolf and Errant Sorcerer Wilhelm, and you'll be rewarded with the Raging Wolf armor set for doing this. Then once you've done that, head a little bit further up this room and you can grab the Alberic's armor set as well. If you go over into the room on the left here, you'll see the stairs are broken so we can't get up onto the first floor. We'll come back and we'll do the top floor of this building later on in the video. For now, we're just going to explore the ground floor. So swing round into this room and you can grab the Two Fingers Prayer Book and 20 Black Key Bolts. There's no items in the next room, just a couple of enemies to beat up. And then if you head back into the main hall and run the other way, you can grab a Smithing Stone 5 from here. And then right at the back will be another painting and a Sight of Grace. Once you're done in there, head back outside and you'll see these two royal knights. A melee one on the floor and a guy with his bow up on the ledge there. I've already killed the melee one because he just started charging at me. But when he dies, you will be rewarded with the Gravelstone Seal, which is a sacred seal used for faith spells and it boosts dragon cult incantations. Next, take out the archer up above as well and then you can start running towards them. Hop around the dragon corpse here, and right at the back you'll see three gravel stones. Then run up the dragon and hop off of his... Is that a fingernail or a toenail? Hop off of his nail onto the roof, and then as long as you time your jump right, you'll be able to hop into this building here. And you can grab a smithing stone six and a stone sword key. Now let's move on to the next one. Now go back to the site of grace at the lower capital church. Head outside and hop down this ladder. Then going northeast, run into the room in front of you and you can deal with a royal knight on your left hand side. Once he's dead, head out of this building, and when you move in far enough, you will spawn an ulcerated tree spirit. I don't know if it's just me, but he felt tremendous amounts more powerful than the one in Stormvale Castle. As you can see from the fight here, I may have used one or two cheesy tactics and still nearly died in the process. Anyway, once he's dead, just like with the other one, you'll be rewarded with a golden seed. And now you've cleared this area, you can move further in where he spawned, and you can grab some golden arrows and a smithing stone six. And now we've cleared the way for the next tip. From where you just killed him, head southeast up these stairs, and you'll come to a courtyard slash graveyard area. There's nothing of interest in here. Couple of worthless items, couple of zombie dudes. Kill them all dead, and when you're done, head to your right and into this room here there's gonna be a ton of soldiers all throwing lightning bombs at you. So be very careful as you're clearing out this room. And then you can open the door into the cell here and grab a stone sword key. Climb up this ladder and you'll open a shortcut back to one of the first areas we were at earlier. This will lead you to the Avenue Balcony site of Grace, which is literally directly below the Erd Tree avatar that we fought on the main street. I somehow forgot to light this one while I was here. You've probably been cleverer than me and already lit it. However, if not, now's your chance. Now that you've done that, you can head back down the shortcut we just opened and back out into the graveyard area. Run all the way along to the other side, to the northeast, and you can pull a lever to activate this lift. Once you take the lift up that you've just unlocked, just run directly across this courtyard and you'll see a crucible knight facing away from you. 
He's a bit of a tough one. But once you take him out, you'll be able to grab a Hero's Rune 5 from the corpse he was just in front of. Which gives you an absurd amount of runes. It's like 50k or 75k or something. Essentially, you've just got the equivalent of a boss's worth of runes right there. It's awesome. And now head further along from his room, down this corridor, you can unlock yet another shortcut. So we've just unlocked three shortcuts in the space of like three minutes. And you're now right back at the very start of the Royal Capital. And with that, we'll go into the next tip. The next thing we're going to do is go back to that really long main road again, head all the way to the east, and you can open up these giant double doors here. There's a couple of items here, including the Flame Drake Talisman plus one, which we'll come to in just a minute. But the main reason we're opening this door is because it will lead you to the next area once you've completed the Royal Capital. So just keep this area in mind. And as I'm clearing it out, I would just like to say at this point, if you haven't already liked the video and you are enjoying it, please give it a like. And if you'd like to see more, it would mean the world if you'd subscribe to the channel and turn the notifications on. Also, because I always forget to do it, we do have other social media channels as well. There are links in the description to the Facebook page, the Discord, Twitter. Twitter's probably the main one that I use, so please hop on over and give us a follow over there as well so you can keep in contact. And now that I've finished waffling, we're just in time to see me get absolutely face-fucked by this misbegotten. Once you've died, you can come back and use your sweaty little try-hard magic build to absolutely wreck his face in, and then you can grab the perfume bottle that he was guarding. Now, head all the way back down and go up the giant stairs here. There's a fair few enemies and a few items, but nothing significant to call out apart from the Somber Smithing Stone 6 just by this statue here. Once you've cleared the area, head all the way up and you'll come to a lift. Take the lift up and clear out these few soldiers and now you can grab the Flame Drake Talisman plus one. And we're done here for now, you'll see the seal is blocking the way, we can't go any further until we finish the Royal Capital, so let's go and do that. Next you want to head back to the Avenue Balcony site of Grace, come straight out through the front doors here, turn left, and then you can hop on the buildings just over the railings and take out this Scarab, which will give you the Thunderbolt Ash of War. There's also a Smithing Stone 5 you can grab just here. And once you've cleared out them few enemies and grabbed the Ash of War, come to this well here. And after following a series of tunnels, once you go down this well, you'll come out in the subterranean shunning grounds, which is an area we will be covering separately because it contains one whole ending to the game. A couple of different NPCs quest lines are partially completed in here as well, and also a huge, huge hidden boss. So for now, I'll just show you where the entrance is and then we'll move on. I just realized in tip 9, just after we killed the ulcerated tree spirit and then went into the graveyard area, I told you it was nothing of worth. Go back there, there is actually one item. You want to jump along the rooftops here and you can grab yourself the black bow, which is just on this corpse here. I already looted it, but let me just go to the inventory and find it and I'll show you. There it is. Honestly, I don't really think any bow compares to the horn bow, but it's another weapon to add to your arsenal, so we may as well grab it while we're here. For the next tip, come back to the West Capital Ramparts. Really quickly, I don't know if this is a bug, and if so, I don't know if it's just a bug with my system. I can't warp to the West Capital Ramparts. They don't appear on the map for me, so I had to find my way back here by jumping back up the Dragon Wing. As you can see, it's just not on the map. So weird. But anyway, once you get back here, run past the few envoys next to the Golden Seed Tree, and then start heading all the way up these huge tree branches here. Kill all of the tree people as you're going up and eventually you'll spot a tree person with loads of flowers blooming from him. The first time I killed him, he dropped an epic item, but his corpse fell, so I wasn't able to loot it. So I don't know if it's a random drop or if the first time you kill him, he is supposed to drop something, but just be very careful as you kill this guy, and hopefully you'll be able to grab a cool piece of loot that I wasn't able to get. Right, when you're nearly at the top, jump off to the left here, and you can go and grab some holy grease on the corpse just here. Then keep running up all the way to the top, and you can come in this giant room here and face off against Godfrey. Godfrey? And then face off against Godfrey, the first Elden Lord. Once you kill him, you'll be rewarded with a talisman pouch, which means you can now equip yet another talisman. Rest at the site of grace, and we'll move on to the next tip. From the site of grace we just lit in the Erd Tree Sanctuary, run out to the east and then climb up the tree here. You'll see there's an item on a hanging piano. Now, there's probably a proper way round to this, but you'll see after a couple of failed attempts from me, you can actually just jump onto the ledge here, 
jump up onto the tree, and then you can grab the item from here, which is a new prayer book for you. The Golden Order Princip Principia. Principia? Principia? That one. And that will allow you to learn Radagon's Rings of Light and the Law of Regression. Now continue on along these balcony walkways, and you can grab the Erd Tree Bow from this chest, and also a Celestial Dew before kicking down the ladder so that you've got a nice easy shortcut back up here again should you fall. And that's it for this one, so now we'll move on to the next boss. Go back to the site of Grace, head out and back up the tree again. This time you want to take a right and come out of the building here, and in front of you you'll be faced with another Black Knife Assassin. This guy can be a bit of a bitch, but when he's dead, you'll be able to run ahead, grab yet another Sight of Grace, and also the Blessing of the Erd Tree incantation. And with that, we've just unlocked the route to the final boss in this area. So just ahead is the final boss that will grant you access to the Erd Tree. But there's just a few more things we want to wrap up before we go there. We have now come to arguably the most important item in the game. As you may or may not know, a few achievements are tied to gathering all legendary equipment. So that's things like weapons, spells, incantations, and talismans. This is the only missable one, because if you progress too far along in the game, something will happen that I won't spoil that will make this inaccessible. So this time we want to head west out of this building, go down the stairs, call the lift up to you, and then take the lift down. Run down the next few flights of stairs as well, and you'll see this giant golden spear sticking into the building below you. Ignore the invisible scarab for now, we'll deal with him in the next tip. Firstly, you want to come up to the fence here where there's a little crack in the balcony. Jump over directly in front of you, and you'll land on here. Down from here, if you're very careful, you can jump onto the spear, hop your way up the spear. Ooh, don't fall off like I very nearly did then. And then you can get the bolt of Grand Sax. Now, I'm not ashamed to admit I did fumble that jump a few times before I finally made the attempt that I just showed you. Now that you've grabbed that, you can go back to the Erd Tree Sanctuary site of Grace and we'll deal with the Scarab. Once you're back here, you can start chasing the Scarab down. And before long, unless you've been really, really quick and been able to kill it immediately, which I think is possible, you will face another Crucible Knight. Honestly, personally, I feel like they just get tougher and tougher and tougher. This one is an absolute machine. But anyway, once you've dealt with him, you'll be rewarded with a poxy amount of runes, and then you can finally take out this scarab and get the Barrier of Gold spell. Now we'll move on to the next one, where we're finally going to go to the upper floor of the Round Table Hold. Get yourself back in this area here, where you can see the ground floor in front of you, where we picked up Alberic's set earlier. Then you want to head left towards the southwest, and you can hop on these two roofs here, and you can get into the top floor of the building. Arguably, we could have done this ages and ages ago. I just forgot about it until this point. I'm sorry about that. But we're here now. It's okay. In here is just so much good shit. Oh my god, there is some awesome loot in here. So I'll leave you to go around and grab everything. But the most important things for me to call out for you is the Sanctified Wet Blade, where Hug would usually be. A Hero's Rune 1 and a Gesture, where Fear would usually be. A Rune Arc right in the center table. A Seedbed Curse, where the Dung Eater will have now spawned, so that you can progress his quest line and a coded sword where the two fingers would usually be. This sword is incredible for pure faith builds because it has zero stat requirements. Actually zero stat requirements apart from faith. And we're done here, so we'll move on to the very last tip for Lanedale, the Royal Capital. This last one isn't so much of a tip, more of a guide. I'll show you on the map in a second once I've dealt with this scarab and this section can only be completed once you've beaten the main boss for the area. So make sure you go back to the Queen's Bedchamber and beat the boss that I left you at earlier. And we are now on that inaccessible strip of road where a seal was blocking our way, where we found the Flame Drake Talisman plus one. So come along here and you'll be able to defeat the Scarab that I just killed, which will reward you with a Somber Smithing Stone six. And then you can run all the way to the end, take this giant lift down, and then run outside and you can light the first sight of grace in the Forbidden Lands.
Okay, I'm actually going to record this one live for you. I can't believe I nearly forgot this. This isn't the tip, but you can grab some fire grease there. Yay! Now, come back to the lift that we took just a second ago to get to the Forbidden Lands. Make sure you're facing southwest as you get on the lift. And jump! In here, I've already got it, obviously, but somewhere in this room, you can grab yourself the Blade of Calling, which is a Faith Dagger. I'm not much of a dagger user myself, but it does have a really cool looking Ash of War. And that really is it for this one now. If you've enjoyed, please like and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you in the next one. Have a fantastic day. Bye-bye.